Hello everybody, I'm Russ Barkley and once again I'm here to go over some recent research that was reported within the past week or two in the science journals. Once again, I cannot review all of the articles that were published. There's probably more than at least 20 to 25 of them. Uh, many of them, uh, as I've said before, don't significantly advance the science all that much. But there's a few that I thought uh, deserve some commentary. You can see a list of the research articles that I chose to uh, focus upon the past two weeks in the thumbnail sketch that accompanies this video. Now let's first have a look at a study that was recently published that is an examination of all of the research with regard to the linkage between childhood maltreatment and ADHD. It's a good systematic review. It looks primarily at longitudinal studies, which is good because that allows us to at least look at some of the timing of how these things affect each other. And as I said in my most recent commentary uh, on this topic of early childhood trauma and ADHD, it's very complex. One simply can't say, as some talk show hosts have said, that ADHD arises exclusively or primarily from childhood trauma, or in this case, childhood maltreatment. Uh, but there is an interaction going on between both of these variables that we need to pay attention to. So uh, this study is a review of all of the other studies that were done. And their systematic review found that there were uh, 11 studies, as you see here, that examined the linkage between maltreatment and ADHD. Uh, and seven of them, them were sufficiently prospective uh, that they could take a look at which preceded which. Five studies appear to suggest that childhood maltreatment might precede ADHD in the lifespan. Two others suggested the opposite relationship. Four studies demonstrated that uh, there was a dose-response relationship between level of childhood maltreatment and risk for ADHD. Now, as the reviewers point out appropriately, I might add, just because childhood maltreatment precedes ADHD doesn't mean that it causes it. All of these studies, in a sense, are correlational, uh, and you can't imply causation from a correlation or a relationship. It's very possible that the reason for the childhood maltreatment in these cases is that one or both parents have ADHD or disorders related to it, such as depression, drug use, alcoholism, uh, antisocial personality and so on, which would create an environment that is more likely to uh, have childhood maltreatment be part of that family context. And therefore, any children who go on to develop ADHD in that context aren't developing it secondary to childhood maltreatment, but instead are developing it because of the genetic relationship between the parent's problems and the child's ADHD. So until we get more longitudinal studies that are genetically informed, meaning they control for the degree of the genetic relationship or risk for ADHD between the parent and the offspring in these studies, it's going to be very hard to disentangle this relationship of ADHD and childhood maltreatment. And the authors go on to point out that there's just a lot of conflicting evidence and interpretation of causality here that needs to get sorted out in future research, particularly research that's going to uh, involve the role of genetic risk. Now, the second study I thought was worth at least a little bit of comment uh, is a study you see here uh, in the Journal of Attention Disorders that examined the uh, impact of increased physical activity on the quality of sleep in children with ADHD. We know that up to 40% on average of children with ADHD have significant sleep problems of various sorts, including insomnia, increased frequent waking at night, uh, decreased efficiency of sleep, early rising, tiredness the next day, and so on. Uh, this study compared children who did not receive an intervention regarding their physical activity and children who did receive an intervention that increased their physical exercise and activity. And it does report that there was a significant improvement in the sleep efficiency, the sleep onset, uh, and sleep waking uh, on a, uh, after sleep, that is the next morning, uh, in the intervention group that had physical activity. So uh, just another study that shows that physical activity may be useful in helping people cope not only with ADHD, but in this case, in children with ADHD who have sleeping difficulties. 
The third article I want to point out just requires brief mention as well. It's in the journal Learning and Individual Differences, as you see here, uh, and it examines the role that sustained attention might play uh, in adults with ADHD in whether or not they develop reading comprehension problems. Now, I have argued in my videos on executive functioning and elsewhere um, that ADHD predisposes to an increasing risk of reading comprehension problems because ADHD disrupts working memory. Working memory is holding in mind information you need to accomplish the task, and that is certainly something one needs to do in comprehending what one reads. So there should be no surprise that ADHD, through its working memory deficits, is going to start causing problems with not only reading comprehension, but with listening comprehension, viewing comprehension, and so on. So anytime an adult doing any task has to hold information in mind, ADHD and its working memory problems may well be interfering with that. So this review, or this study rather, uh, took a look at adults with and without ADHD and gave them a variety of measures of short-term memory, of attention span, and of course of reading comprehension. Uh, and it found that although the two groups didn't differ in short-term memory, short-term memory is not working memory, or in their vocabulary, that was very important to show. But the ADHD group did receive significantly lower scores, not only on sustained attention, but on the reading comprehension tasks. And they went on to show in further analyses that the degree of sustained attention was directly related to the degree of reading comprehension problems. And we know that such sustained attention is also linked to working memory. So yet just another study, this time in adults, showing a relationship that we've known about for quite a while between ADHD and reading comprehension problems. And as I've said, it isn't just reading, it shows up in listening and viewing comprehension as well. Finally, there was a nice review that appeared uh, in uh, the journal Life Sciences, uh, and uh, you can see it here, a comparison of ADHD with autism spectrum disorder on various cognitive, neurological, and emotional measures. Uh, and it claims to be a systematic review, found about 19 studies that compared ADHD with uh, autism spectrum, ASD, uh, and it basically finds that there weren't an awful lot of differences here. Uh, the differences in emotional skills were rather inconclusive. Uh, ASD uh, subjects had greater problems with theory of mind, uh, may well have had greater difficulties uh, with empathy, but even that was not particularly conclusive. Uh, there were no significant differences between the groups in emotion recognition. Uh, there were some differences in brain structure, though these were not very consistent. It appeared that people with ASD seemed to have weaker brain connectivity, whereas people with ADHD appeared to have reduced or smaller amounts of gray and white matter uh, compared to those with ASD. But again, more research needs to be done on these particular issues. Also keep in mind that ASD and ADHD do overlap, so there is a need to control in these studies for that degree of overlap because sometimes that contaminates the findings and leads to inconclusive results uh, in these comparisons. But a rather interesting review that you can see in, as you see here, the journal was Europe PMC, on the comparison of ASD and ADHD. So uh, that's a wrap up for the week. Have a look at the thumbnail sketch to see all of the other articles that have been published within the past one to two weeks. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you here again on this channel for another research review in the future. Be well.